Can you shut the door? Hey, guys. Oh, dang it, again. Don't know why that happened. Thanks. Uh, this is Nerdish. I'm Brendan. Uh, today, I will be talking about special right triangles. Yesterday, it was uh, similar triangles. Um, and then Levi will be coming on later to talk about sentence ordering. Go ahead, because you just messed up. Oh, hello. Yes, I did. I see what I did. Um, hi, I'm Levi. <clears throat> uh, I'm not Brendan. You saw what I did? Uh, no, I have no clue So instead of, so go to, go to the normal thing I, that you do to make it full screen, right. and then click the other option. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Darren. Hey, Darren. And encryption. Yeah, encryption wanted everybody to know. They were first. Hi, encryption. Okay. Bye. Okay, great. Um, special right triangles. All right. If you guys have any questions at any point, again, let us know. We'll put it in the queue. If it's about what I'm talking about, I'll just answer it uh, as they come in. So uh, we talked about these actually a little bit yesterday um, on stream. It's not going to be too long of an actual lesson about these. Um, the special right triangles we're worried about, um, they're called 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90. Now, we, we have these, and we call them special right triangles because they have a relationship that is, um, when you get to the actual num numerical values of the relationship, it's actually pretty clean. Um, but these are values that come up quite often, and they're with angle measures that you should have um, memorized. Uh, I don't like to say you should memorize these things. You should learn them, and you should know them. Um, but it, in theory, you should also have them memorized. Do you like me saying that? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Um, Anyway, what these are going to look like, um, both right triangles. So the 45-45, um, you're going to have an, not an equilateral, an isosceles right triangle. That's the same thing, okay? Uh, we know that if the angles are the same, all right, so these are both 45 degrees. We have just one line there, meaning they are the same angle. They're the same measure. We know that the legs opposite them are also going to be the same. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't think we got into that uh, yesterday with similar triangles, uh, but that's something we know. Now, let's say for example, that I have a length of one here. Uh, that means I will also, because these angles are both 45 degrees, I will also have a length of one here. The angles are important, but th that's not the only thing we care about with these special right triangles. It also allows us to know the ratio and the relationship between each of the legs um, of the triangle. So the way to prove this, what I'm going to get here, the way to solve for it, uh, we know it's a right triangle, so we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, And this is how you can prove both of them. Eh, Pythagorean theorem, good enough. This is how I can prove the relationship for both of these. Okay. To start, this one's going to be pretty simple. I have 1 squared plus 1 squared, and we'll say this is c, equals c squared. 1 squared is just 1, 1 squared is just 1, so that's going to be 2 equals c squared. So c equals the square root of 2. Great. Um, also, if you guys have any questions and you want to post them in the Discord, you know where that's at. It's above or below in the description. Uh, if you have a picture of an actual question, Otherwise, you can just type it in in the chat, in the comment section, um, and we'll see that all in front of us. We can get to that. Uh, the 45, 45, 40, 90, I started with, it's a little more straightforward. It's a little bit easier to wrap your head around. Um, and you'll end up just having this relationship where you have whatever this leg is, whether it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, um, it's going to be the same length as the other because it's an isosceles triangle. And then the hypotenuse is going to be uh, the square root of twice that value. So if we use x's here, right? So this was x. This is x, and this is the square root of 2x. Now on the ACT, uh, you'll need to know this. For the SAT, they actually give you this in the front. Um, they have a list of equations and theory, not theories, theorems. Um, 
that you need to know um, for both tests, but for the ACT, they just give it to you. So it's, it's actually like a cheat sheet and they let you use it. Um, I would recommend if you didn't know that to learn those things so you are aware that they exist, if nothing else, um, so that you know when you're taking the test that, oh, I remember I, there's some triangle identity I can use here. Well, let me look back and see if it's given. Um, if you're doing the ACT, learn this, know this, and understand it. Pretty straightforward. Now, the 30, 60, 90 is a little different, um, and we'll get to that. Still the same concept, right? I can still prove it using um, Pythagorean theorem, and I will. Uh, normally, we don't take time uh, proving a lot of the things we talk about because it's not necessarily helpful to the student to know how to prove it. Uh, I think for these, however, they're very quick proofs um, and it can help with understanding. It help understand why we can do this um, and it's just more practice of why it's applicable. Okay, now we're on to get a different color, 30, 60, 90. This one's not going to look quite the same. It's going to look something like that. Uh, that means we're going to have the 60 degrees here and the 30 degrees here. Like we said earlier, with the 45-45, the lengths of their legs are going to be the same because they're the same angle measure, meaning the leg, the length of the leg is going to be uh, relative or it's going to be um, based on the size of the angle. And if you think about that, if you have an angle that is very small, it opens up just a little bit. So the distance between my fingers here is not that much, right? It's very short. Whereas if I had a larger angle, uh, there you go, the distance between my fingers is quite a bit larger. Same thing happens here. So the 30 degrees goes to the shorter leg, the 60 goes to the longer, and then the 90 degrees obviously is opposite the hypotenuse. How I like to prove this is to think about an equilateral triangle. And that just means every side length is the same. Okay, and we'll say that every side length is just, oh, uh, how do I want to do this so it's clean? Yeah, I'll say every side length is 2x. Nice. That'll make this a little bit easier when we get to the next step. Um, okay, so I have an equilateral triangle. They're all 60 degrees, and all the legs are the same. The reason that's important is because now we know that well, obviously, if we have 60 degrees, 60, 60, that's 180, so it works out. They're all equal. If I take a line now called the altitude, and I were to draw it down through here like this, uh, what that does is two things. One, it cuts this bottom line in half. So now I have x and x, which is why I said 2x to begin with, so it would be a little bit cleaner to deal with. Um, and then we know these two lengths. We don't know this one. And we know the angle measures of all of these. So the altitude cuts this in half. So let me draw you just, uh, I'll draw it over here. One side of this is going to look like this now. All right? similar to this. We have 2x, our x, and our unknown, I'll call it b as if it's a, b, c. We know that this is 60 degrees. And we know that this was 60, but it got cut in half. So up here, let's do this so it's 2 is 30 degrees. And then what I'm allowed to do here, or what I should do to try to solve for b, is use Pythagorean theorem. So I have x squared plus b squared equals 4x squared. I can subtract the x, so I get b squared equals 3x squared. And then <clears throat> in terms of b, I can just square root both these, so I get b equals x, which is whatever we had, multiplied by the square root of 3. So an example here, if the lengths of this were all just 1, if x was 1, this would be 1, 2, and the square root of 3. If it was 2, I'd have 2, 4, and 2 times the square root of 3, and it continues. All right. That's special right triangles. Now, how will they ask a question about this? How will you use this um, and actually apply this to a test problem or test question? Great question, guys. Thanks for asking. Oh, 
want to help? Thanks. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you want the overlay? Uh, no, no. It's on. It's this is going to be pulled from an SAT. Okay. So we don't have that one specifically up. Mm-hmm. Uh, gotcha. <clears throat> Does right. it smell worse than normal? The cleaning fluid? Uh, I don't really want to. Okay. I don't think so. I mean, it's diluted now, so it's not as bad as it was a couple days yeah, ago. All right. The next question I pulled from one of the practice AC or sorry practice SATs, um, all of which can be found online on our tutoring website or on College Board website. They have a number of free tests. But the question effectively, it has a it goes something like this. They have a figure drawn. Uh, it's not a bad circle. It's not great. Um, and they give you that this is on the xy plane. All right, so here's my x, here's my y. And they give you that there is a point out here, and they draw it pretty much like that. That's what we start with, and we know that this point is root 3, comma 1. OK, we know this is point O. And this is, oh, what is this? This is some measure of theta degrees, OK? Now, we want to find the measure of angle th- theta. All right, does that, that eh, syntax correct there? It, look, it feels funky. Let's just say we want to fine. find theta. What? It's fine. It just feels weird. Um, in terms of... Oh, if you're calling it angle theta, you could also just say it's theta. Yeah, all right. We want to find theta in terms of... A, where theta equals uh, pi over A. So what they're asking there, that might seem a little confusing, but what they're getting at in this last part is that they're going to be uh, converting this into radians. Otherwise, it's the same thing. We still need to start by solving for theta, and then we'll just convert it to radians, um, and that's how we're going to solve for A. Great. So, or actually, we're solving for A. But what we want to do here, first, if you're watching, you probably know we're talking about special right triangles. So you're probably conscious of that, and you're going to look at this and say, oh, I know it has to be special right triangles. Well, let's assume for a minute that you're just taking a practice test, or you're taking the real test, and you stumble upon this. We talk about recognition. Okay, We want to recognize something about this that tells us what we need to do. For starters, I see a circle. Usually when we see circles, uh, it's a good thing to draw radii. Well, the point that they talked about, there's already a radius there, so I'm, I'm good. They've done that. Uh, and then they're asking us to find A, where A equals pi over A equals theta. Well, that means I now have to find theta. OK, uh, I know a couple of things, right? This is my x and y values, so I can draw a line straight down, and now I have x and y values. So if I pull that triangle out, I know that my y value here is a 1, and I know that my x value here is the square root of 3. Well, we just worked with special right triangles, and I know that there's a relationship if I have 1 and root 3. First of all, and this actually isn't useful, but just to prove my point, I know that this is 2. I could use Pythagorean theorem and prove that. We did that a second ago, so I'm not going to. But the important part here is the angles, uh, the angle measures we are certain of. The longer leg is going to go to 60 degrees. The shorter leg is going to go to, not 60, I'm going to go to 30. If I look at this, Right there, I pulled it out in theory. Theta then equals 30. I'm not done because now I need to convert that to radians, right? Here, where theta equals pi over a. Well, if I want to know pi radians, and this is something to know or to remember or memorize, if you will. 
Um, pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. Uh, there's a lot of ways we can go about proving that or showing how that's used. If you have questions on that, let us know. I'll put in the queue. Actually, I'll probably go over it right now. Uh, if you have questions on that, if not, I'm assuming you all are comfortable with this and we're just gonna go to the next step. Great. So, I now have 30 degrees equals pi radians, but I'm gonna convert that. I have 180 degrees over A, which means 30 degrees times A equals 180, or A equals six. And that is your answer. All right, we're finding A actually. So let me erase this. There we go. So we're finding A where theta is pi over A. There we are. If there are any questions on this, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to erase it. Um, and I'm actually done with special right triangles. We can talk about uh, perfect triples later, perfect Pythagorean triplets later, but that's not really, um, it's not really used much on the test. This is used a lot more common. Uh, this is used a lot more. It is more common words. All right, Levi doesn't leave there any questions on this one. Nope. Great, I'm going to go ahead and erase it then. Don't say I didn't warn you. Do you want me to pull up the overlay? Yep, give me a sec to intro, but yeah. <clears throat> also, feel free to cut yourself a slice of pizza. I just ate two tacos, two huge tacos, but thank you. Oh, okay. Otherwise, I would. That pizza. So Anybody much here? You want pizza? Get it yourself. I can't give it to you. It's true. Not for lack of trying. I have tried. Okay. Uh, someone told me that. I think Verizon or some other company um, like tried to figure out technology of like sending smells right through the television mm. and it could have been a terrible joke they were making but I think I looked it up and there was something about it where like they basically scrapped the idea because if one thing messes up whatever they're able to do to produce a smell mm. just messes up meaning there's most likely going to be a horrid smell that you can't fix if there's an issue mm. so they didn't do it but I always thought that'd be fun that's kind of nice, though. That they don't do it? No, it's a nice idea. Oh, yeah. Okay, what we're doing our... sentence reordering or ordering or whatever. How do you spell this? Ordering. Okay, these aren't particularly complicated questions. You know what you're supposed to do. It's not that hard. But there is a specific approach that makes it way more accurate. And... I, it's, it's one of the types of questions where people think it's easy and they think they know how to do it and so they just read it through and see, oh, does this sound good? And sometimes they'll pick up on the little things that actually make it right or wrong. That's fine, but it's one, a waste of time, and two, an inaccurate way of doing things. So, and it's not like a terribly complicated way of doing it. Uh, so what you're going to do is look for clues. That's number one and that's number two and number three. That's basically all you're doing. Look for clues. And they're going to be smaller clues than you necessarily think. So it's going to be words like this or for example or, or things like that that are connecting words that connect your sentence to other ideas. So I'll show you what you mean, what I mean. Brendan, can you pull up the overlay? Yep. I've got to go to the English section number 29. Okay. Um, right. And unfortunately we're going to have to hop around a lot. That's fine, I'll be ready. Okay. So we're doing number 29 here. <clears throat> and this is a different one. It's not saying where should we put this sentence in a given paragraph. It's saying that we are going to put this sentence in. It doesn't exist in the passage already, and we're just going to choose A, B, C, or D. And those are marked in the passage. So upon revising the essay and finding that some information has been left out, the writer composes the following sentence incorporating that information. Here's the sentence. If the writer were to add this sentence into the essay, the sentence would most log logically be placed where? So let's read the sentence and look for clues in this sentence. And you don't have to. You can you know, not 
too diff w without too much difficulty get this question right, but you should look for specific clues. So this technique, also known as open excavation, became the standard for subway tunneling for nearly 60 years. Okay, there is one glaring clue to me, and that's this technique. They say the word this. This technique. That's what I care about, because that what that demonstrates is that there's some technique that has been explained. We haven't gotten a term for it because we just gave it a term here, but that technique has been explained. That's super, super important. So in all of these choices that we have, there needs to be a technique and it needs to be immediate because the words, this technique, it's actually relatively ambiguous if the thing that you're referencing is not immediately before you say this technique. So this technique, also known as this thing, became a standard for subway tunneling for nearly 60 years. Maybe something after this says, and then they moved on to this newer technique. Not sure, it's not definite, but in this case, we definitely need the technique first. So Brendan, let's go to the beginning of the passage and look for letter A in the passage. Uh... There's an A there. Okay, yes, this is, and that is the beginning of the passage. Okay. Uh, this paragraph, yeah. Uh, the original subway line was 9.1 miles long and had 28 stations. This technique, called whatever, no, that doesn't make any sense. A doesn't make any sense because we don't have a technique, and it's also, it's very clear that that wouldn't flow. And now we'll look for B. Uh, B is, I think, um, no, there's C. To the end of that first paragraph. Ah, here we go, B. Okay, so let's read through the rest of the paragraph. The first train took 26 minutes to complete the route, which ran from City Hall to West 145th Street in under half an hour. Tens of thousands of New Yorkers could now avoid traffic jams by traveling underneath the streets. And then it says, this technique, um, and let's go back, let me just see what the technique was exactly. This technique, also known as open excavation, uh, became the standard for subway tunneling. Okay, so let's go back. B doesn't make any sense. They are saying that New Yorkers are now avoiding traffic jams and traveling underneath the streets. That's not really a technique, but I wanted to make sure, and they, they called it subway excavation. Excavation is when you're digging, so that doesn't make any sense. To be, the people are not digging as they go to travel. So now let's look at C, which is down here. Ah, but there we go. Thank you, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Parsons decided that, that most of the subway tunnel would be constructed using uh, an, innovation, an innovative engineering method known as cut and cover. This technique, call it whatever, da 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 da, and then they explain the technique. First workers, okay, so that seems fantastic. That's great. I'm not saying that you wouldn't have gotten it anyway, but this approach kind of helps a little bit, okay? That's, we were looking for something specific and we found it. We're not done yet. We are never done. Well, actually, we are done after four. So we need to check D, which is not here, it seems. Okay, now D is up here. Brightly lit stations welcomed the public, many of whom were skeptical of traveling underground. That is not a technique, it is wrong. So I took my time going through this problem. So the answer is D for 29, of course. I took my time going C. through this problem. C, whoa, the answer to this problem is C. Wow, good. You had it, you just- I had it, D you had it, and I were lost it. Dang it! Okay. That, it's Brady's bit, don't you It dare. is Brady's bit. I, it's a uh, copyright bird. Anyway, this is C. There was one thing, there was one clue here, and that was the clue that got us through the whole question. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm saying you should definitely do it. Because in this case, it was the one thing. Could have figured it out anyway. So I'm not even going to circle it. Does anybody have any questions on that? It's really hot in here. Want me to go see if the heater is on? Yes, <laughs> please. Wow. Really Okay. Please let me know if you have questions or you'd like to challenge me on this Ooh. technique. Yeah. I, I challenge you to a duel. To a duel? Yeah, I don't know. Right here? I wish I had like a glove I could throw it down. I just saw Hamilton and it was so good. Ah, it's good. It gets enough press. Let it go. There's a new show called Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's new. Huh? <laughs> it's very new. Yeah. Okay. This, uh, let's go to, uh, shoot, what was the number? It's very close to the end. Okay. We will find it. Sorry about the lag if there is one. There it is, 60. Do, 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 do. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Okay, this is the same type of thing. I wanted to find one where it was just where it, where it is now, the other stuff, but it doesn't really matter. 
Okay, same type of thing. 60, upon reviewing the essay and finding that, okay, same exact question, just different stuff inside of it. This sentence would be most logically placed, so let's look for clues again. Yet, despite such strong ties, we moved far apart as adults, as adults and lost touch. Okay, we have the word yet. Wow, there are lit that's a, literally a whole question type, which is transitions, right? Would you use the word yet or therefore? Something like that. So we have the word yet, which means we have contrast. Despite such strong ties, so yet and despite, it's kind of hopping on top of each other. So yet, despite such strong ties, we moved far apart as adults and lost touch. Okay, so there's actually another one, which is, uh, whoop, sorry, we. Kind of just ruined it. Yeah. Yeah. How about, is that better? Yeah. Okay. Despite having, despite such strong ties, we, we lost touch as adults, which means as kids, they were very close. That is what we have to have beforehand and what we have to have, and then you know, they lost touch. So we'll see. Yeah. Okay. So we are looking for sentence two in paragraph one, the end of paragraph two, end of paragraph four, and, and first is, okay. So let's just do sentence two, paragraph one. If, ooh, hello. Uh, if choosing an answer using process of elimination, if choosing an answer using process of elimination, what strategies should we keep in mind? Um, I like that question. Oh, okay. This, this question type, um, let's see, what, what are things that could eliminate an answer? It would be, uh, it, it's talking about something totally different. It doesn't fit in with the clues. So we, right now, have decided that the clue we're looking for is they need to be very, who's, whoever we is, they need to be very close as younger people so that when they're adults, despite those strong ties, they lose touch. Now, on a higher level, yeah, more generally, um, there, there are lots of things. I'll write them up real quick. So it could be irrelevant. If it's irrelevant, that's generally very easy uh, to eliminate. And this is something that shouldn't be missed and should happen immediately. So that requires a very close reading of the question. You have to know the question type that you're doing, and you have to know exactly all the, the, the little details of that question to be able to get rid of irrelevant, and it makes the test quicker because you can eliminate the easier wrong answers first. So irrelevant, and then I, I think contradictory, you're just wrong. And these are generally pretty straightforward. If something is wrong, you should be able to to recognize that. But it's often the case that two contradictory ideas are very close in your mind for whatever reason. So it can be that you read something as he loved her, but it actually said she loved him. And those are contradictory ideas, possibly, um, if it's unrequited love. And in this case, it might be easy to miss. But that's another one. I say irrelevant is the most important because that's the most common wrong answer. Contradictory, there's extreme. So this can go in either direction, but these are small words like I was actually just talking about in these, in these um, what are these, the sentence placement questions. And it, an answer can be extreme or a question can be extreme because it's saying this always happens or this never happens or he hates her or um, she loves him. Something that's very, very strong. It doesn't have to be the most important word in the sentence. Like, I always go see my grandpa and play with his dog. Great, but if the narrator went there once, that's an extreme answer because they didn't, the narrator didn't always go. So it's small things like that. Those are very, very common for those last two answers when you're choosing which one to eliminate. These are the biggest three. Um, there's the contradictory one is, uh, I call it jumble sometimes when they jumble up the, the subjects. And then this is not exactly a wrong answer thing because the right answers also use the correct terms, but name dropping. This is something that I think is dangerous because when somebody is running through questions as quickly as possible because they're nervous or they don't have time, whatever it might be, they get caught up by name dropping. So the question is, uh, it, there's a bunch of technical terms and so you, you're trying to read through the passage very quickly or you don't even go back and look at the passage, but in the question you recognize words. So somebody's name or a date or a place, something like that, and you think, oh, I saw that in this part of the passage, so that's the right answer, and then you move on. That is not a good idea. That's why, to get rid of name dropping, you want to eliminate things, because el elimination doesn't get confused by name dropping because you're trying to, you are trying to prove it wrong. So if you see, oh, 
uh, Michelangelo is mentioned in this, and he's definitely in the passage. Well, you also are trying to prove that they're talking about Michelangelo in the wrong way. So you go back, and maybe they are, and that's how you can get rid of that question, or it might be the right one. Uh, Manal, I hope that answered your question. That was a question from Facebook, everybody, just so you know. Um, <clears throat> these are only some of them. These are the big four in my book. There are other possibilities, too. These are the big four. Okay. Uh, please keep asking questions if you do have them. I'm almost done with this. Well, I'm not almost done with this question. I've barely started. But I've done the hard part, which is identifying the clue that we need two, two kids who are close who then get less close. So this is... Paragraph one question. Paragraph two, sentence one. before or after? Let me double check. Sure. i got to erase anyway. So after sentence two and paragraph one. After sentence two and paragraph one. So we have, I met Jo... Is it Joanne or Joan? That I would say Joan. Joan, okay. Joanne is usually two N's and an E, maybe. And an H and a silent K. Nope. No? Okay. No. Okay, so let's do, I met Joanne. Wait, what did we say, Joan? Joan. <laughs> I met Joan, the person who would be my best friend for the next 20 years, the first morning I played outside my family's new California home. I was five years old. Yet, despite being close, we drifted as adults. We became inseparable childhood friends. Now we have a problem. Because we got what we wanted first, which is meeting, it seems like the, the narrator has met Joan, and now they're very close. Yet, despite these strong ties, okay, we're still happy, we drifted as adults, but that, now we've moved on to a new idea, but here we're still stuck with, I was five years old, we became inseparable childhood friends. That can't be split up because that tra we, the, the sentence that we're given is trying to transition away from being young kids. So I don't like it in that position, so I would say A or F or whatever that was is wrong. Now, next one. We have at the beginning of paragraph two. End of paragraph two. End of paragraph two. Same thing. Alright. Okay, so we got a long paragraph. Joan and jo Joanne Joan enjoyed this thing doing all these different things. More importantly, though, we enjoyed being together. Though our history of sh through our history of shared experiences, we formed a rare understanding of each other. Okay, great. Yet, despite this, we drifted as adults. Okay, and then I want to see how this next paragraph starts. So, last February, I had to travel to Fairbanks, Alaska for my work. That seems a little weird. Though we had rarely spoken to each other for 15 years, when I called Joanne, Joan, Joanne, whatever. Can't do that. Okay, so now we have something else. And I think another one of the questions in, for this passage is messing with the order of these three sentences in this paragraph, which is why this is confusing. But the previous paragraph, paragraph two, was talking about being close Sorry. as kids. And then paragraph three is talking about how they're, they're far apart now and they've drifted. So I like that transition. It's a little weird because these sentences are out of order, I think. But let's go on to the next one. I like it. I'm just a little uncomfortable. End of four. End of paragraph four. We have, I called Joanne, Joan from my payphone. She met me on a street corner that was close to her, her art studio. Okay, so they're not kids at this point. Kids do not own art studios unless they're one of those kids that, like, nah. you know, the, the dad paints for them and then says it's the kid and they make lots of money. <laughs> anyway. You know? Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I don't like that because they're already adults, so that's no good. And then the last one is at the first sentence in, after the first sentence in paragraph six. Okay. Oops, sorry. Where are we? Okay. When I saw Joan's new painting, I immediately remembered her distinct way of emphasizing shadows and light. Eh. Yeah. No. I, you, they're not kids. It, 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 we're not transitioning out of kiddom. So. Well, hold on, though. Well, I agree with that, but no, no, I agree with what yeah. you're saying, but they didn't say anything about them as kids. It's just as adults, we lost touch. So, yeah, you're right. I, I still yeah, agree with we what moved saying. apart as adults, so I yeah. I don't like that. It seems like after going through this passage very quickly, there was the childhood part, and then there was the being adults and dealing with art part. Therefore, I think it should go with the what did we say at the end of paragraph two? Uh, yes, at the end so, of paragraph so two, childhood and then adulthood. Yeah. Anybody have any questions on that? This you know it's again it's, it's not a terribly terribly hard question or question type, but don't get bogged down in the weeds. Do this. This is the one thing. Look for clues. Find them. They're not necessarily the big words. It's the transition words. And the, the words, I wrote it, but the extreme words. So always, never, 
that type of thing. It tells you where you're coming from and where you're going. And it might imply that, you know, if they say, if they say her in the sentence, well, we don't know who her is, so that has to be explained beforehand. If they say, and that was the first time I saw Bob, well, something's going to lead into that, and you can't introduce Bob earlier in the passage. That type of thing. Okay, seems like there are no questions on this. It is pretty simple. It's more just me begging you to do this thing for these questions. It makes you, it allows you to go faster and to, to rely, uh, you know, more on an approach that gives you more accuracy. Okay, I think we're good here. I really want some more pizza. Um, please ask us more questions. We're done with the, the lecture part of this evening. So ask questions on anything. It can be what we just talked about. It can also be other parts of the test. Or, Brandon, it can be no. about your personal life. We said we weren't going to do that. Oh. I said it. <laughs> yes. All right. Great. Um, Manal, also, um, if you have any more questions, keep them coming. Hopefully that answered your question. Let us know if it did or didn't. Um, I know we talked about that a, a minute ago. Um, hmm. uh, yeah, let us know. Also, now that we have a break in the regular schedule, I can't say regularly the right way. It just feels weird. When say, I say regularly. Readily? No, regularly. Regularly? Yeah, just say regularly. Regularly? Yeah, it makes you sound really smart. Anyway, in a regularly sound... scheduled program, I just feel like there's too many L's in there. Regularly. regularly. It feels weird. In yeah. a regularly scheduled programming uh now's the part of the show where we go ahead and tell you about all the things we do and i dance we do this free five nights a week sunday to thursday 8 to 9 p.m 9 30 p.m uh eastern we next week we will be doing this monday to friday because well it's the super bowl uh and we want to watch that so we're going to do that saturday or sunday Don't move. uh yeah i'll try not to and then Friday, we're going to be having... Thursday and Friday of next week, we're going to be having... That's not my hair. Who knows, dude? <laughs> Who knows? We're going to be having longer sessions because of the SAT... No, the ACT, sorry, coming up February 9th. So next Saturday is a test, so we're going to be um, having longer streams. Those are also going to be more freeform where we're not going... That was good. Where we're not going to be having um, lessons beforehand. It's mostly just going to be any questions students have, any last-minute questions, we'll be there to help answer them. Anything like that. Thanks, Levi. Um, that's ridiculous. Okay, cool. Is Here lies I Brendan, <laughs> who ran into the board so hard he died immediately. <laughs> and so we outlined his body. That's great. Yep. Um, or the toxic marker, just like his, the residue has gotten on me enough to where when, as I ran and passed through it into the nothingness, uh, it continued to just make an outline of me. Yes. Great. Okay, you'll do that. got to erase this before anybody sees it. Um, you got it? Yep. Okay. Also, we have a Discord, which if you're not familiar with that, it is a group messaging app. Uh, it's free to join as well, like most of the things we do. Um, you can get on that. If you're a student, it's best because then you can ask questions and get answers for them. Uh, that is where lots of students ask questions that we end up answering live on stream. We have a YouTube, a Facebook, a Twitch, a Twitter, an Instagram. Uh, I, yeah, I think that's about it. That's quite a lot of things. Um, so if you like us, if you like what we're doing, feel free to follow, like, subscribe, or follow that. Tons of different things you can do, guys. Um, why are you eating on stream, though? No reason to be eating here. Although we are in just chatting, so I mean, in theory, it fits in with the whole thing. You know what makes me mad, guys? And I'll, I'll share this. This is a little bit of a rant. So I was watching, no, I was on Twitch the other day, because we do Twitch, right? Some guy, no, I was on Reddit. Some guy got 200 views in the just chatting category. Let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what, the, what, what he did. We laid the, laid the grounds for you, okay? He fell asleep while streaming. Oh, right. He just was sleeping, and people joined to watch because he was sleeping, and they were waiting in suspense for him to wake up. He woke up to like so much money in donations, subs, and 200 or 300 viewers. I think, like, he was to just be fair, passed out. that's really funny. It's ridiculous. That is what, like, that's the people we're trying to reach. It's more than ridiculous. Man, social media is weird. <laughs> right? Yes, like, it is. Yes, it is. Like, it's like going to a horse race and just like, oh, I wonder when they're going to wake up. Like, oh, man. So it bothers me that we're not there. I can fall asleep on stream. I yeah. probably should sleep more. 
Also, if you guys have questions about the tests in general, when you should plan on taking the test, if you're a junior, sophomore, senior, well, you know, um, anything like that, if you have questions about uh, when you should start studying for the test, anything like that, let us know. If you have questions about any of the strategies we would recommend for any of the given sections, um, anything at all, let us know. You can ask questions about college and things like that. Um, expo, like the Expo marker. Yes, I copied it from Yeah, from no, I like that. We're, we are not supported by Expo. I mean, we're supported by them, but they don't pay us or give us free yes, stuff. Yes, we support them. Yeah, quite a bit, to be honest. Okay, um, I actually have a question. Or, I have a problem that I will do away. for you. Now, <clears throat> this is what we're given. We're given this. We are told that this is convenient. true. Convenient. So, yeah, very convenient. I'm going to write a little true thing there. Yeah. And we are asked to evaluate this expression. 8 to the x power divided by 2 to the y power. Yes, sir. Can I interject? Of course. So, looking at this, it might seem a little confusing. Something we, we talk about recognition with math again. Something you should recognize is they probably won't give you an equation unless you're going to use it. So that should be something that kind of pushes you in the right direction of what to do here. Go ahead. Yep. Very true. The question has everything you need to get to the answers, right? Which is a very, very obvious concept. But it's something that you should actually use. This you should use. Also, the fact that you see exponents means that you should probably do exponent stuff. And there's not that much. It's like if you see mm -hmm. a gun on stage when you're watching a play, like everybody does all the time, then <clears throat> the gun will probably go off. This is your gun. Exponents, OK? It's not political, but you're saying it's exponents. So you're going to be nice. using exponents. You're going to be using this equation. What are your exponent rules? You know there's power rule. You know something to the zero power is 1. You know something to the first power is itself. You know that. Oh, uh, look at that. We have division here. Okay, so we're going to use what we see, which is exponents and then division. So quotient rule, which means, well, we can't do quotient rule because we have 8 and we have 2. The bases need to be the same. How do we make the bases not the same? We do change of base. If you don't know what change of base is, please ask because that's very, very hard. If You, you will not know how to do this problem if you don't know how to do change of base. You were speaking faster than I normally I do. I wasn't, I swear. You don't know. I don't know. You, 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 got, you got pretty quick there. Yeah. And I, I normally am the one doing that, so I don't so, really care too much, but yeah. We have exponents, we have division, but we can't use our exponent rules until we have the same base, which means we need to do change of base. Change of, base, change of base, which I don't necessarily want to explain unless somebody says something. Please say something if you need it explained. Because um, it's, it's the highest level concept for exponents. That they'll okay. test on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> that yeah. test on. That test on. Okay. Oh, man. We want this 8 to become a 2, so we're going to rewrite this as 2 cubed to the x power, x power, 2 to the y power. This with the power rule is 2 to the 3x power. Oh, my gosh, Brendan, did you see something? Uh, is If something's raised to the x power, is that how x-men get created? Yes, it is. Cool. No, what I saw was you multiply these to get 2 to the 3x. Yes, that's the power rule. And also, now we're going to use the quotient rule. Because you can. Because we can. We have 2 to the 3x minus y power. There is no other exponent rule that we can do here. But, Brandon. Something seems familiar here. What seems familiar here? Probably the only other thing written on the board. Oh, my gosh. There it is. Good memory. I know. I, I'm, I've been practicing. So. Those brain teasers. Yeah. 3x minus it. y is the same thing as 4. So we're just going to substitute that into there. And what do we get? 2 to the 4th, which is? Uh, 16. 30, 30, 16. 16. Hmm, sorry? 16. 16, yes. It's been too long since I've had to deal with binary, 1630, all right? 16.30, that's what I heard. I said 16, no 32, 16, 16. Yeah. And so I said a lot of things. So 16, yes. Okay, so there were a bunch but of rules Usually here. they leave it like this for the answer. But yeah, it could very much be that. We have exponents, we have division, it gives us exponent rules, we do change of base, power rule, quotient rule, and we have to substitute something that's completely unrelated to those things until the very end. Mm-hmm. You don't have to know to do that every time. What you do need to practice is when you see, it's all about recognition for time. If you have timing issues, it's about recognition. If you don't know what to do, it's about recognition. If you're not taking this test, it's we're about in, recognition that you time. shouldn't be watching this stream unless you're trying to... Find out more about Levi's personal life. Yeah, which we will, we will tell you all about it later. So... He said it. He, <clears throat> make, don't make him a liar. Yeah, don't make me a liar. Um, <clears throat> 
recognition. We see exponents. We're probably going to use exponents. It is your gun on stage. It's on the mantelpiece. Someone's going to pick it up at some point, and they're going to, you know, they're going to... It'll just be a desktop. Don't worry. <laughs> just a desktop. Uh, you mean what? You mean you're done a desktop? Everybody's done desktops. Uh, the other guys, is that what that is? Yes. Yeah, Will Ferrell and uh, Marky Mark. You know Marky Mark? Yeah. Okay. It seems Mark like, Mark. you know, there are hundreds of questions about this topic, but I'm not going to answer any of you because no one's actually asking. So let's get rid of it. Make it like it was never there. I'm going to do what I can. Why are you, why, what are you, stop. I am having fun. I'm glad you're having fun, but you're being, you're wasting. What am I wasting? I don't know. <laughs> Time, because we don't have enough. Energy. <laughs> Definitely there. Oh, Brady had a question pulled up the other day that I was, I hope he put in the thing today, but I don't think he did in our blooper gag reel. I just but, watched it. Uh, oh, I need to watch it. Hey, it is, also, if you watch us because you think we're funny, which is silly, which, but thank but you. You then you can don't leave, take the test. Yeah, you can leave the stream and just go to our YouTube where we put all of our bloopers and gag reels, which Brady, who's very, very, very funny, goes and picks through and finds the funniest, goofiest, or most embarrassing things from the night before and uploads them. So for all of you out there who don't like me, hey, I'm sure there's some of you who are still my friends on Facebook. Go ahead. Have a laugh at my expense. I think they're funny. Also, feel free to share them with other people who would also like to laugh at me, not with me. I guess you could yeah. say with me, because I think it's funny, but it's definitely a pointed thing. Look, the ACT is coming up very soon. The SAT following that comes up very soon after that. Mark. You need to ask questions, okay? There are, there are three possibilities. You are going to be taking one of those tests. Someone you know. Soon or later. Um, you have a child that's going to be taking one of those tests sometime soon. Or Shout you have a parent who's going to be taking one of those tests sometime soon. So you should either be asking concept-based questions about the tests, questions about Brandon's personal life, Not or questions about how to get people in your life to watch this stream, which is very important. There you go. You heard it yeah. here first. Um, or to find parents that are taking this, the tests. Yeah, that's an odd one. I don't think that's nearly as Try to convince your parents to take the SAT. Yeah. I think that'd be a good exercise. It would that'd be. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. Parents are like, oh, like, you know, parents are parents want the best for their children. So they're like, you know, we want you to do well on this. I think it'd be funny for the kids to be like, all right, well, here's why I do this well. Or here's why, you know, it's hard. Just yeah. to, like, have them have. Yeah. That should be, oh, my gosh. Guys, hold on. We should have that be part of our, like, actual tutoring thing is, like, we ask that the parents also take the diagnostic <laughs> We don't. Yeah. Don't worry. I just think it'd be yeah, it'd we be funny. We would it'd never be make prank. any money ever. No, 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 no. We would Which not. wouldn't change anything. Uh, so there was one more thing I wanted to say. Oh, is it that we tutor privately as well? You can check the links in all of our descriptions. I didn't want to say that. Oh, okay. Don't tell them that. Oh, okay. What if they? Okay. Also, Xvex, you said you were gonna be here. I don't see you here. I feel lied to. It's kind of personal at this point, so. You know, speak up or, you know, forever make me feel cheated and now I'm jaded. Do the second one. Yeah, Levi would really like that, though. Um, great. Any other questions for the SAT, ACT? You forget? You just can't remember what you forgot? Mm -hmm. At least at least you remember that Stop. you forgot I need to something. Stop. I need to think about this. Ah. Okay. Uh, great. Again, you can find any of our blooper reels or our questions of the day. Our questions of the day we put on our Facebook page because that's a little more professional. Uh, if you want to see our bloopers where it's us being us... Um, and being foolish, you, you just wanted to eat pizza. He's, no, a, no. he's a dirty liar. Oh my gosh, look at him. That's not true. I wish I could just turn the camera, but it, I mean, it's, it's on a tripod and I don't, anyway. Um, yeah, watch us on YouTube to see all of our blunders. Not blenders, although there is a really cool blender channel called Will It Blend on YouTube. Uh, you could lose a lot of time to that channel. Anyway, questions, answers. The tests. What do you need to know? What do you not need to know? There's plenty of things you don't need to know. You don't need to know Levi's middle name, which is really odd and I can't ever remember it because it's a very unusual name. Oh, here we go. Cube. That's not your middle name. Sounds like... <laughs> no, that's this one. Oh. This means correct. Oh. On the nose. Oh, okay. On the nose. I get it. Mm-hmm. 
hue with eight inch side lengths, you're gonna say, what's the volume? Surface area. How do you find the surface area of a cube where you know that the side lengths are all eight inches? I had so much trouble the other day trying to draw I, I, I heard. a 3D shape. Oh my gosh, it hurt. It was it was a rectangle, so all I needed to do was that, and then just a rectangular prism and just stretch it out, and for some reason my mind shut down. All right, all right anyway. Give this a shot. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but okay. Give it a shot. No. I Did you? Okay. Over your head. That's fine. No, like try to be a doctor. Uh, be, give a shot to, to giving a shot. Okay. Uh, if we have a cube with 8-inch side lengths... What is the surface area? How do we go about solving this? Do you know what I mean when I ask for the surface area? The surface area is, if I were to take some paint and try to paint every side of this, um, everything that was covered in paint would be the surface area. Right? You could find how much paint it would take to do that. That's one of the questions they'll probably ask if they ask about surface area. What we want to do is think about it. If I have a cube, how many surfaces do I have? Um, well, I have... If I had a cube, oh man, do you have a Rubik's cube in your room? No, it's at your house. Okay, not here. Um, it has four sides around, right, to make the, f the cube, and then two on either side, right? So we end up having six surfaces. Now, oh no, what we want to do is take the summation or add up all of the areas for each of those sides. So now I want the area of... So I want six areas, okay? And those areas are going to be eight inches by eight inches. So that's going to give me 64 inches squared. That looks almost like a question mark. And then what I want to do is multiply that by six because there are six of those. And then for this, it's going to be 360 plus 384. Let me double check that. Uh, 64 times 6, yes. 384 inches cubed. That's going to give me my surface area. Glad I took my ACT 30 years ago. It was easier. Hey, Chainsaw Squirrel. Thanks for joining. Um, do you have a son or daughter who needs who will be taking this? Or did you just drop on by to say, hey, we appreciate it either way? Also, why chainsaw squirrel? Why not chainsaw rabbit? Things to think about. Uh, Levi, can you scroll down? For some reason, the uh, thing's yes. not working there. Thank you. I know. You have a son that will be next year. Well, hey, we do this for free five nights a week, and we do private tutoring for not for free as well. Um, but hey, free always sounds better, am I right? Do you finish it already? Yeah. Oh. It's a very That's straightforward sad. problem. Thought it was gonna take you hours. <laughs> hours. Mm hmm Okay. Um, but yeah. And we're just here to make Twitch and I guess technically Facebook and YouTube live, whatever guys, we're on all of them. Uh, make it something that like, you know, you don't have to get onto your kids for being on too long. Even if that just means we're an excuse for them to be on Twitch too much. That sounds okay. bad, but so let's it's say not. that you have. I, I this Why is my, my new favorite problem. Okay. Let's say oh, that no. you have two sons and uh, seven daughters. Okay, it's a lot of kids. I had some friends who had ten sons and daughters. And you you have them all in a playpen. They just happen to all be the size to be in a play. It doesn't really matter how big they are. They're all in a playpen, and you. <clears throat> need to get one of them and you want it so that if you're going to pull out a random child not by the head like that but no it's going to be by the, pull by out the child. oh like yeah. one of the claw machines uh-huh yeah. yeah so you're going to pull out a yeah cool. so you're going to pull out a child and geometry kicked his butt but ace algebra one and two we tutor that as well um we also cover it here some yeah uh so tons of free resources <laughs> two sons seven daughters and you want to get to the point where you are going to, you want to pull out a son 
and you want there to be, uh, let's say, uh, two thirds chance. That doesn't make sense. Uh, no. <laughs> well, you have nine kids. I'm gonna change the numbers. Yeah, that would make this easier if you're yeah. trying to get to that. You have 15 sons. Wow. And you have nine daughters, okay? Mm. And you want to get to the point where you are going to have a one-third chance. So you're going to um, add daughters or, you know. Have daughters? Yeah, have daughters. Be like a Henry the 13th kind add of Add daughters, yeah. Wasn't exactly. it Henry? Uh, it was probably One all of the Henrys Henry. could only have daughters and he kept blaming Add his daughters wives. till one-third chance of drawing a daughter. I just think this is a really weird way of doing this. Now, this is how you teach parents. N no. Yes. I've taught so many also, parents in my day. think about what you just said. Add daughters uh -huh. until you have a one-third chance of drawing a daughter. Yep. Oh, I was thinking about it the wrong way, too. Good. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. yeah, you did it wrong, because it's already yeah. over one-third. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. add sons. So we're going to... Or two-thirds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just we're going to do two-thirds. Yeah. Okay. You want a two-thirds chance to add a daughter. It's also one of the weirder I ways to do I pulled my it. son. He was exactly, he was. I saw that. Yeah. Did you realize hey, you were Hey, I'll on... do some. I'll do. always in church. <laughs> yes, no, we are don't sufficiently... encourage them. Don't encourage yeah, them. Yeah, don't encourage us. We're not, we're going to do it anyway. So encouragement is, is uh, yeah, just validating. So They're just running we need to get this bag. to happen. Now, the problem is that right now we add up to only 24 children. And that's obviously not enough, because 9 out of 24 is not a two-thirds chance of drawing a daughter by, you know, I guess, the head. Just like, yeah, that's, kids are fine. They're very small. Let's just think they're very small. And, like, it's not going to hurt them if you do that, unless they're very, very small. It's not like a, a cat ball. where you just, like, grab it by the nape of the neck. You can't treat cats that way. That's cruel. That's now, how you pick them this up. This is here. Okay, okay. we got to finish this problem before somebody gets hurt. So, nine Maybe. daughters... And we're going to add X daughters, right? We don't know how many more daughters we need to give, us, give ourselves that two-thirds chance. And we're going to start with 24 children overall, but we need to add that same number of daughters. So now mm -hmm. we're here. And we want a two-thirds chance. So add yeah. X until we get a two-thirds chance. This is our equation. I like building equations. One, because it keeps children safe, and two, because it allows us to now forget the rest of the problem and solve for x because we know that's what we're being asked for. So in this case, uh, we can cross multiply. We get 48 plus 2x equals 27 plus 3x. Hmm. Subtract 2x, subtract 27. We get 21 equals, really? That's a lot. So hold on. So yeah, think about it. 21 plus 15 is 36. No, no, no. Wow. But Did yeah. I mess it up royally? No. No, I didn't. There are just not a lot of daughters to start out with. Yeah. So you have is... 30 daughters. Sorry, not 21. <clears throat> yeah. 30, so 21 is 45. X. So that means you have 30 daughters out of uh, a total of 45 children. Which That's is... a lot. It's a lot of children. Look, let's just think about it back in the Egyptian days where they had thousands of wives. So it's totally, totally fine. Axe Vax, there you are. Hey, I, you know what? I called you out earlier because you weren't here. Hopefully you have some questions for us. Axe Vax, I'll you just missed a, a really, really hairy situation with way too many children. 45 children to be, to be yeah. exact. It was a lot. I was actually the 43rd of 44 children. I know for a fact that is incorrect. You're the middle child of three. Ugh. Yeah, look at me, spoiling it. Don't tell them. My younger sister doesn't know. You <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, we we replied. You should have gotten it, and let us know if it went to your spam. But it shouldn't have. That's possible. Oh, no. But, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, we, we did reply. Or we thought, Brady, Brady replied. Bird replied. Yeah, yeah, that was last night. Did, he, did x Fax meet Bird, though? Mm, mm, I, don't I don't know. No, I don't think he did. No. He didn't meet Bird. Also, x Fax. Something that, as a student, you might enjoy. We have um, some goofy videos on YouTube, which are our gag reels. Really good to show your parents for why you should tutor with us. Oh, wait, no. No, that's the wrong. We have question of the day, which is really good oh, to God. show your You're parents. You're a terrible salesman. Okay. Don't tell Nate. I won't tell Nate. Uh, okay. More jokes. So, x -Fax, 
stop checking or check later or something. But we want more questions aside from um, talking about chainsaw squirrels, forty-five really, children, really cool name. or twenty, twenty-four children for now, forty-five very yeah. soon, very soon. Also, chainsaw squirrel. I'm curious how you <clears throat> didn't see it, as okay. in you just skipped over it, or it was in the spam. Or you don't currently see I'll it send when you checked. Message now. Like you didn't see it when you checked. There's a number of different things that can mean. Most importantly, ask questions. Yeah. Um, Chainsaw Squirrel. We will let you know in the email. Actually, we try to get a phone call so we can kind of talk about it. XX. Um, yeah. Chainsaw Squirrel, if you are still on, it's been a little bit... Um, what would it be under on the website we'll figure it out okay um how did you happen upon our stream did you come from facebook did you come from youtube i guess did you just check us out were you going through it just chatting and found us um always interested to know how people kind of just stumble upon the stream if it's not through uh some of those more obvious things gonna go play basketball in like five minutes all right what would it be under in terms of your thing but we'll for sure be here tomorrow okay um, you came through Reddit. Cool. Um, yeah. Did you, so you use the ACT Reddit a lot. Fair enough. Um, if you didn't see the email, let us know and we will send you another one or join our discord and we can send you a DM on that and kind of get it figured out that way. If it's not, if it's not working anyways, we've got some more time. If anybody has questions, looks like XVAX is, uh, showed up just to say hey, and then they're going to go and play some basketball. Because basketball is my favorite sport. I love the way they dribble up and down the court. Just doing very topical things today. Basketball court? Yeah, but I realized like it's here. Yeah. And okay, like yeah, that makes it better. And now it kind of looks like um, Patrick's house from SpongeBob. No, because his is just a rock. And then, um, Squidward's is like a stone, not Stonehenge. What's That's the, what I meant. I what's meant the email Squidward. that it's sent from? Look for an at Accelerate Tutoring. Yeah. We'll get XFX. We can... Tutor. Gotta take a break for today. Look, it's best to Fair. never take a break. That. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, okay. SpongeBob. Yes, yeah, SpongeBob. So Ouch. let's say we have this, and we'll, you know, I should know the measurements. 94 feet, or is it 98 feet? 94. I'm it doesn't matter, man. So just make 47. it up. No one actually cares about basketball. 47 feet. That's kind of true. So that's 47 feet. Not even LeBron cares. He just does it because he's good at it. He hates and the sport. He's told me. It's Three a basketball point court. Line? Yeah. This is too much. Whatever. <clears throat> Got the free throw. I mean, Let's yeah, say that this is A, B, C, D. These are all the points. Wow. It's going to be a lot of points. Not, Not when I play. Point. You got the email. Great. Oh, cool. All right. If it was in your spam, let us know, because I'm not stoked about that if it is. Sounds good, XFX. Great. <clears throat> if G, H, I... I'm going to point okay. out that you don't have these being the same point, okay. but you have these being the same point. Oh, guys it's don't... not the same point. It's a different point. Uh, yeah, you just didn't do it. It's fine. Okay. And we'll say that this is... Let me go ahead and check the Facebook. X. Okay. Now, this is our basketball court. It's terrifying. Let's assume that this arc BXG is a semicircle. Okay. So, point to here, semi-circle. Now, <clears throat> I want to figure out how high the key is. So, from here to here, which Calvin is... private. Sorry? Uh, private, private stuff, yeah. We, we do the private tutoring not on here. We just talk about it a lot. <clears throat> I want to know... This height right here. That's what we're going for. And I want to know that because I want to know the area of the 
area under three point line. Under, you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Great. That's what we want, but we have to get there. And obviously I haven't given you enough information yet to make this possible. So let's say that this area here is Hmm. 25. I have no idea what you're going for. 8 pi units squared. Okay, so that's the area of that little portion there. And then let's say, you know, we're just going to erase this thing because I don't know what this is. That's a little clear. Oh, I think that's why I had drawn to be the free throw. Oh, got it. Because there's a box that you got it there. Okay. Now let's say that this length here, from C to K, is... These, these are wrong, just so you know, these are wrong. Um, let's say... Okay. Let's say that's 10. Let's say that's a right angle. Let's say that this is 30 degrees. Let's say that this is 60 degrees. Okay? And I'm asking you, what is the area under the three-point line? Do you want 8 pi? <clears throat> I do want 8 pi. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> we need to get from this information here to figuring out the area under the three-point line. And this type of thing, because this type of thing comes up, the numbers are better and it might be more interesting, but we know what we're starting with and we know where we need to go. We're going to throw math at it until it works. And now, it, don't, don't get you know, confused because it doesn't tell you what to do. So don't freak out. I, I'm not being told what to do, so I don't know what to do. Throw math at it that seems to be related. Before, we threw math at the exponents problem because we saw exponents. We threw the exponent rules we knew. Here, probably no exponents. Maybe there's some trig because there are some degree measures. There's probably going to be some triangle stuff because there's a triangle. There's probably going to be some circle stuff because there are semicircles here. Okay? So let's start with the triangle here. We need to figure out this distance, right? Because we found that this distance would be the radius of this semicircle. So if we know that distance, then we're good. But to find out that distance, we need to find out possibly what this distance is. We need to find out what this distance is. So we're working backwards. So let's start with the semicircle. We know that this circle here, J, X, K, and then finishing out, would be an area of 16 pi. Because we have a full circle that has an area of 16 pi. Now, the area formula is pi r squared, which means if we solve this, we get rid of the pi's. Exactly, pi r square yeah, that's how you want to do it. And then we take the square root, and we find that the radius of this circle is 4. Now, that gives us information, because this semicircle here will have a radius of 4. So now we know that from here to here, we have a length of 4. And now we just need this portion. This portion is probably going to use this triangle here. We have what seems to be a hypotenuse. I gave you that right angle. They might give you too much information on this type of thing. They will never give you not enough, unless it's one of those questions where it says, uh, possibly, that maybe you don't have enough information to answer the question. In this case, that's not an option. Here, we're going to use the 30, 60, 90 rule that Brendan talked about at the beginning of the stream today. We know that if this is 30 and 60, oh, that's not exactly what I wanted. Hmm. Well, Brendan, can you on your calculator figure out for me what, oh no, you don't need to do that. Can you come up here and I talk agree. about your, your stuff? Sure. Watch your step when you come out here. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we talked about special right triangles today. Yes, he did. So we have a 30, 60, 90. 30 degrees, uh, 60 degrees. This isn't this isn't to form, but that's fine. 90. Uh, we have the basics of what this is going to look like. We're going to have this be x. We know that this is 2x, right? The hypotenuse is twice the length of the leg that is opposite the 30 degree angle. 
From there, you can use hypo, uh, hypotenuse. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Pythagorean theorem. Uh, that word didn't come out for some reason. And we get 2 root x. Cool. I feel like it. Yeah. So, in this case, we're starting with the 2x up here. So that means that x is 5. Hold on. Oh my gosh. No. What? Did you mess up? Yeah. Oh, is it? It's three? x root 3. <laughs> I knew something felt weird. I was like, that's so yeah. wrong. Anyway, there you, there you go. go, guys. That looks so much nicer. Yeah. I don't know. We all made mistakes. I caught it really quick. <laughs> I kept looking at it. Okay, so if we know that our hypotenuse is 10, all right, that means x equals 5. Cool. Meaning that this is now 5 root 3. Lovely. Which is a gross number. It is a gross number. So this is 5 root 3 now. Now we know that this entire length is 9. No, it's not. It's 4 plus 5 root 3. So now we know. Oh my gosh. Sorry for punching the mic if that hurt anybody's ears. You always do that. And now 4 plus 5 root 3 is the radius of our circle. And we have a semicircle. So now the area of, let's say, this uh, semicircle here, so I'm going to draw oh. it like that, is going to be 1 half times pi times r, 4 plus 5 root 3, squared. I have no idea what the answer to this question is, but you plug it into your calculator and you're fine. They would never ask you to um, evaluate this if you didn't have a calculator with you, because that would be silly. It's positive, if that helps. Maybe 16 plus 25 Okay, that is enough of that. Yeah, no, that's so great. <clears throat> Any questions on this? Anything else? Stuff you want to know. It can be about, it doesn't have to be concept based. It can be approach based. It can be just, it can be about timing. It can be about nerves on the test. It can be about what type of pencils to use or what type of calculator to use, that type of thing. Anything you want to know? Yeah, I don't like the look of that thing. There was something I really wanted to say in the realm of parents doing um, silly things. Students' work. To not to. No, like having to take the test so that they understand, or what? Not that. I mean, most parents are pretty understanding people. Oh, I think I remember. It was, so I love my parents very much, but parents oh. as an institution, kind of a silly thing. What as an institution? Parents. Why? Hmm. Seems silly. Okay. What? It takes a village. To raise a child, sure. Where do you, what are you getting at? No, that's all I got. Theater machinations of my mind. Or an enigma. You can't even appreciate if that's a good or bad Patrick because you just have no point of reference. Huh, I do. Uh, not really, man. It's kind of sad. Oh, touche. All right. Hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. Did he just come up here to sigh? <laughs> <sighs> Testing done. It's done. It's over. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead and ask any questions you have about the SAT or ACT. Ask us about us. Why are, are we qualified to do this? I mean, short answer, yes. But are you sure? How can you know? You haven't asked. I mean, our profiles talk about it. But hey, how do you know? Ask. We can tell you. We did college once. And only once. Could have done it a second time. Could have gone back for the masters, but why would you do that? Why would you do that? For any kids out there, only get a masters if you know you want to do it. If you want to go into that field, parents might not like hearing that because a master's degree just is good. It sounds good. It looks good on paper, but it can be a waste of money if you don't want to end up going into it.
It's gonna be a problem, Levi. Yep. How many solutions? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so if we're given a quadratic, how are we supposed to find the number of solutions it has? All right. Sometimes they'll ask this. They'll say how many, and they'll say unique real solutions. Real meaning it's not imaginary. It's not a negative square root of a negative number. I'm gonna write it over here. Uh, sure. And then unique, meaning if you end up with x plus 3 squared, even though that's going to be x equals negative 3 and negative 3, right, twice, uh, that's only one unique solution. So um, they mean, this can be confusing to kids a lot because they say, well, there are two solutions, but they were the same, so they can't be unique. Uh, that's not quite what they mean, but the wording they'll use is the word unique. So they're really asking how many different solutions are there um, that don't overlap. So negative three and negative three, that's just one solution in the same. Little uh, pro tip right there. Um, is that all or do you want to? No, no, I'm thinking. Okay. Cinco. Siete. Okay, cool. Um, so what we have here, zero. yeah, thank you. Okay, what we're looking for here is to find the number of unique real solutions. Um, Caitlin, thank you. Keep it up, awesome work. Thanks. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. If you, Do you know, that? Is, does Brady know this person or is this someone from Teen College Prep? I don't know. Great, well, if you know someone who needs help, send them our way, have them ask questions or ask questions yourself. Uh, what we can do here, um, did you do this on purpose? No. Yes, you did. So if I were to try to factor this, I would say I have to have something that multiplies to 7 and adds to uh, negative 6. Right? Well, what multiplies to 7? Well, that is 1 and 7. All right, if I have a, uh, from negative 6, I can have Mm, I can add, let's look at it this way. I cannot do that with the numbers given to multiply to 7. I can, I, it looks like I can do this because if I were to take uh, negative 7 and a positive 1, I could get negative 6. But if I were to multiply those, I'd get a negative 7. So I can't factor this, uh, what we might say is the easy way or, or, or a way that is more commonly used. Uh, what I have to do instead is use the quadratic formula. And now this is actually, the reason he did this specifically uh, was so that we could use the quadratic formula because there is a specific part of the quadratic formula uh, that will tell us how many solutions we have. Um, and we don't need to do the whole thing. Now I'm gonna write it up real quick. So we have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. What we use from this, uh, and the way to determine the number of solutions we're going to have, is called the discriminant. Discriminant. Boom. And that is actually just this right here. So if this value is greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero, we know a few things. All right? So for this, we're going to end up having, and I'm just going to write the discriminant as d. Okay, so this is going to be x equals negative b, which is negative negative 6, so 6, plus or minus d, okay, over 2a, so over 2. What I know now is I do know that d, I could, I replaced uh, b squared, the square root of b squared minus 4ac with d, because if this is greater than 0, I'm going to have two real solutions. So two solutions. Why that is, is because this is the square root. So if I take the square root of a number, and it's a positive number, um, it's going to be uh, plus or minus that value, right? So the discriminant is actually everything inside the square root function, right? So uh, yeah, I have room there, b squared minus 4ac. Good. If there's enough arrows, if there's not, let me know. Um, 
so if this is positive, I can take the square root, right? It's a square root of a positive number, so I'm going to get a plus or minus a value, which is what we have here, plus or minus some value. It's greater than zero, so it's two positive solutions. Now, if it's equal to zero, we're saying six over two plus or minus zero. That's gonna be the same thing. So we actually have one solution, right? Because we don't have anything to add to this, right? That would just be three and three, like I had earlier when I, when I wrote it out over here. Now, if our discriminant, if b squared minus four ac is negative, if it's less than zero, that is us trying to take the square root of a negative number. We can't do that, right? Um, you know, negative four, right? We can't do that. Meaning, well, we can, we're just going to get i, right? We're gonna pull an i out, an imaginary number, but we're asking for real solutions. So then we get zero solutions. So this is a very quick and easy way to determine whether or not a, um, an equation or a quadratic has real solutions at all and how many they have. So Levi, throw me another one real quick. Anything, just make one up. X squared. Um, no, 2x squared. Okay. My plus 2x. Okay. Minus 13. 13. So I can see this and I can say, I don't need to worry about much of that at all. What I'm worried about, oh, nope, I don't want that, I want my blue. Okay, is I'm just going to take b squared minus 4ac and I'm going to see where it falls. b squared is going to be four, oh man, minus four a, so four times a is going to give me, well, let's just do it, four times two times negative 13. Okay, six, no, sorry, eight times 13, negative 13, so four minus uh, a negative, and eight times 13 is gonna be 80 plus 24, 104. Fact check me, Levi. 104, eight times 13 is 104. Yeah, Yep. cool. Now, these are actually going to be added together because they, they negate e each other. And if you're subtracting a negative, you're actually adding uh, a positive, so that is going to be 108. That is greater than zero. So we have two real solutions. All right, pretty quick, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, still got some time. If there are any questions on this, let me know. Um, this is probably the quickest way to answer these questions, unless it's a very simple, obvious one. Um, but especially if they have you know, a coefficient out here in front of the x squared term, it can get a little bit uh, more confusing. So yeah, this is how I would recommend doing it. Any questions? Any questions? All right, if not, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, we've said this already, but there's no one asking questions, so I'll say it again. Uh, in our descriptions, you can find links to our general calendar, which is going to go over what concepts we cover on any given night. Uh, you can look ahead, see what we'll be covering, and see if that's something you specifically need to work on. We have um, a link to our private website uh, where we do private tutoring. You can find our information on there. Reach out to us. Um, we have an Instagram, a Facebook, a YouTube, a Twitch, a Twitter. Um, we have a Discord, which is where students ask us questions in a group chat setting. They can post uh, pictures of the questions from an actual uh, practice test or whatever. We can go over and go over them. Yeah, so feel free to check any and all of that out. If you like what we're doing here, feel free to follow us on any of our social medias. Uh, we constantly post questions of the day. Uh, we send out tweets and other updates to let you guys know what we're going to be talking about that day. We have blooper and gag reels on some of them. Yeah, just generally uh, us. For the last couple of minutes, if nobody has a separate question, I'm going to go back to something we did last week real quick, which is apostrophes. Oh, no. Yeah. Why would you do apostrophes? that? Apostrophes. Oh, I finished uh, book five, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's a good book. Yeah. It's a good one. You like the next one.
I probably will. Wheel of Jordan. Wheel of Jordan. Wheel of Time by Robert oh Jordan. Oh my gosh. Wheel of Jordan. <laughs> ah, you know what? I'd read it still if it was called that. It's good. Um, Wheel of Time. Wheel of Jordan by Robert Time. By Robert. Yeah. Robert. By. T- <laughs> Such a weird thing. <laughs> I am so messed up right now. Yes, you are. Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan is a great series. Um, y'all should check it out. It's only like, what, 13 or 14 books? My cousins were on right now. They'd be upset for not remembering how many books specifically. There are 14. It's 14. Um, and they're all like 600 to 1,000 pages. It's great. It's a big investment. Totally worth it. Great. Singular ROI. with apostrophes is very easy. You're going to have your word... And then, then you're going to add apostrophe S. It doesn't matter what else. Now you have to make sure that this word is singular to be sure of that. So this would be Brendan's something. Brendan's traps. What about Keanu Reeves? Be, um, nah. Keanu Reeves. What if he had um, something? That's considered singular. So it would be Reeves's? Yeah. There you go. If it's a person's name, doesn't matter. Apostrophe S. It could be cats, like the the domesticated animal or the undomesticated animal it could be um the pencils eraser eraser, something like that so all of those just apostrophe s that's very simple now plural is harder so we have two options number one (laughs) wow we're just having a great day wow interesting oh man number one there it is is there's letters. Try to do that. X it is X, X S. Oh, X S. Apostrophe. That's number one. So this is something like. Um, a regular plural. It's a plural that ends with an S. Yes. So students. The students' scores. So there are two students, and they both have scores. The students' scores. So the students classroom or something like that where there's multiple students and they have ownership over something so there's an s there you just put another apostrophe this s is not part of the ownership it's part of the plural word now if we have the second case which is x x x whatever there's no s at the end then you do apostrophe s so that's the whole thing there this is just that one okay so in this case it's like children Children is if you have forty-five children and they have snow snow boots or something, your children's snow boots is going to be a po- it's going to be no uh, it's going to be apostrophe s apostrophe c oh okay apostrophe, apostrophe c. s having a rough so let's go. do let's do another couple ones so data data is actually plural just so everybody's know everybody knows data is also plural. Yes, same word. So this singular is datum. datum. So I'll put that here. So the datum's source or the data's source. source, source. Can you make that A look less like a C? Yeah. Or an E for me? Thanks. And then plural <clears throat> with an S at the end would be birds. The, the birds' nests. The birds' nests. These are the three cases. It's singular, just apostrophe S. If it's plural with no S, apostrophe S. If it's plural with an S, just apostrophe. That's all you add. Regardless, there's going to be an S towards the end of the word. You may or may not have an apostrophe afterwards. Seems like there are no questions on this. If you want a particular word and want us to tell you, yeah, sure. Um, When you see these as the possibilities of the answer choices, so it's birds with an apostrophe S, S apostrophe S apostrophe S, whatever it might be, identify whether or not the words should be singular or plural. If it's singular, you're done. It's just going to be apostrophe S. If it's plural, figure out if that S needs to be there to finish and make the word plural. If it does, then you shouldn't have one afterwards. And if it doesn't, put apostrophe S. Okay, that's simple enough. All right, we are <clears throat> out of time. Out of time. Yep, thanks for tuning in, guys. Feel free to come back tomorrow, have some questions prepared. Um, Feel free to check out our social medias, our gag reels. Uh, We have those up every day. I think pretty much every day after a stream, we have a gag reel and a question of the day. Feel free to check those out. Um, Feel free to share. Feel free to spread us like the plague. Spread us like the plague. Just cough (coughs) on people. 
It's still not how we mean that. That's, that's how I meant it the first time. I don't think so. It is. But I, th I do think you were the first one of us to say spread it like the plague, so I will give you that much. Yes, yes, yes. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Thank you.